Guru Nation, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. It means a lot to me. Keep sending your questions, your comments. Uh, anything helps, but the, some of them also help for creating the content, like today's video. And I can't believe I never had a video. I probably have in the past, but recently, just on its own about study startup. And study startup, this is going to be helpful whether you're a site or whether you're somebody trying to learn the ins and outs of being a CRA when it comes to study startup. So I'm actually going through this right now with my site. We're, we have a new study. I'm the coordinator. So I'm going to share from my perspective as a coordinator and also from my experiences in the past as a CRA as well with study startup. So once the site has been awarded a study, the CRA sends the, or, or the sponsor or somebody, sponsor CRO or CRA, send the site acceptance letter. Uh, or they're just sent the startup packet and the acceptance letter is in an email saying, hey, you've been selected. Here's the startup regulatory package and also the contract and budget. Now that might go to a different person at the site. It may not go to the coordinator. But in my case, it all comes to me. And so then we get started on study startup. And the next step is for me to finish all these, get all these documents completed. And a few other things I'm going to mention in this video so that we can have a site initiation visit uh, shortly and also have that contract and budget negotiated. So this is after the site acceptance notification. The CRA will ask for essential documents from the site. So by this point, they already collected most likely the informed consent process. They probably collected the checklist, uh, the table of contents for the site SOP. So they probably have a good idea of how the site operates and um, whether the site's using a central or local IRB and whether they're going to use a central or local lab. Uh, they probably collect the CLIA certificate, CLIA waiver, uh, either CLIA waiver or CLIA certificate. Uh, the CDA has probably already been collected. CVs of all staff members have probably been collected. So here's the essential documents. Number one is the 1572. That is the contract between the PI and the FDA stating that the PI stating by signing this form, it's my responsibility of the conduct of the study at this site. And on that 1572 form, in addition to the protocol info, the IRB info, any labs that are going to be used, box six has sub investigators. Now, everybody at the site who's going to be participating as a sub investigator needs to be in box six. As soon as they get put into box six of that 1572, you need to collect and have on file CVs, medical licenses, GCP training, any other training they may have, such as IATA training, which is shipping hazardous goods, or NIH protecting human research, research subjects, or any other relevant trainings. In addition to that, you will need financial disclosure forms, which are forms that will disclose whether that particular investigator has financial stake in the sponsor company. Uh, they, it's okay if they do, they just have to disclose. So it's either yes or no. That needs to be collected. So 1572, financial disclosure forms, CVs, licenses, GCPs, any other trainings that they may have, maybe ACLS trainings, whatever trainings are relevant for the study need to be collected. Additionally, what we're going to need is the protocol signature page and the investigator brochure receipt. Those are universal for all, just about every study I've ever worked on. Those are required as essential documents, startup documents. Additionally, you're going to need 
the IRB approval for the site. So when you get your site has to apply, it's an initial approval, an initial site application to the IRB, whether it's central or local, but I'm talking about central, where it's probably a 10 to 15 page document. You can do it online now. Uh, where the site fills out information about the site, the PI, the coordinators, what kind of trainings they've had, what the community sentiment towards research is, how much you'll be paying the patients. That all goes into the initial site IRB application, whether you have a 24-hour number, that also goes into the initial site IRB application. Once you get IRB approval, the informed consent needs to be generated by the IRB. They have a sponsor approved template where you have to fill in the necessary information, like how much patients are going to get paid, what's the 24 hour line, who they can contact at the site for various issues. That's the informed consent. So that's also considered a startup regulatory document. Uh, this is all startup regulatory prior to the SIV, just to keep this video short and simple. So I think that's pretty much it. The at the SIV, the CRA is going to do the training log, and the CRA is going to do the delegation of authorities log. But prior to the SIV, these are the things that the site needs to do. The site needs to have on file so that the CRA can do an SIV, and it could go smooth. It could be efficient. And we don't have to search for things like IRB approval. And the CRA is basically not wasting their time coming out to do the SIV with just a bunch of action items. So you, you can collect these things beforehand. Uh, at the SIV, that's probably time for another video. But this is for study startup. Also, the contract and budget needs to get negotiated and finalized during this time. And that's about it. And then the site initiation visit uh, happens. So hopefully this helps. I wanted to keep it short. This is the study startup from a site perspective and a CRA perspective uh, in a nutshell. Good luck, Guru Nation. Let me know if I missed anything in the comments. Let me know if this was helpful in the comments. Catch you all later. Bye-bye.